Hello everyone, and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine monsters and nightmares from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at Slenderman, the famous internet horror icon created in the Something Awful forums by user Eric Knudsen. Ever since its creation, it has extended towards an incredible amount of media by many creators, becoming one of the greatest horror icons in the world for a few years, as well as being among the first new horror icons born not from mainstream media or old legends, but from the internet. Knowing all of this, it was really fascinating to take a look at this fella and include it in this year's Halloween lineup. So here goes a thank you to everyone who suggested this creature in the comments, and to our patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing or joining our Patreon, link available in the video's description. Now, let's get on to the spookiness. Every urban legend, Every boogeyman that stalks humanity begins with something real. To be expected, really, given the amounts of often dangerous creatures that stalk the world, moving silently everywhere mankind does not hold its domain, and in many cases, even in the places they do. One such creature is the slender-legged spider, Polytrachia anthromimus a spider belonging to the family Dictinidae, the mesh-webbed spiders, inhabiting many forested areas throughout the United States. This species of spider has followed the tendency towards gigantism presented by many other arthropods in the world. However, rather than taking on the enormous bipedal appearance of other predatory arthropods, like the zombie wasp, the slender-legged spider has developed into a sedentary hunter that waits for its prey in the forests near human populations. This spider has developed a large abdomen and cephalothorax, as well as longer legs, not collapsing under its weight thanks to the reduction of its exoskeleton's thickness, as has happened with other giant insects, having also developed a greater amount of sieve tracheas which help it obtain more oxygen from the air around it. Poorly adapted to fast, abrupt movements, the slender-legged spider is instead very subtle and slow, and will hang from the trees, waiting for its prey to get close enough. Despite its huge size relative to other spiders, the slender-legged spider is not strong or big enough to overpower most of its prey. Rather than attack directly, the spider will pluck its web like the strings of a guitar, causing noises that will scare its prey, slowly guiding it towards its messy, disorganized web. In extreme cases, it will even make its presence clear to its prey, hanging in its direct line of sight, in order to frighten it and make it run straight into its trap. Once its prey has fallen into the spider's trap, a single bite will be enough to seal its fate. The effect of the spider's venom will be slow, but inevitable, slowly consuming its prey from the inside out for the spider to feed. Should bigger and stronger prey manage to escape the spider's web, the venom running through its body will ensure they don't get far. The spider will use the same technique it uses to hunt, slowly guiding its prey again and again to its nest. As the venom acts on the body, the victim will feel progressively weaker and will lose its sense of direction as its nervous system begins failing. Soon, the victim will begin hallucinating and will finally lose consciousness. The slender-legged spider, having never lost sight of its prey, will simply descend over its victim and feed on it where it fell. Once it has finished feeding, the spider will return to the trees and rest. Should the spider already be full upon finding new prey, it will hunt anyway, and wrap it in silk to be eaten at a later time. 
While many animals have been affected by human presence, the slender-legged spider is a terrifying example of a creature that has evolved in direct response to human activity. After all, its gigantism is owed to the decrease in smaller prey due to indiscriminate use of pesticides, as well as an increase in the presence and abundance of larger animals, especially domestic ones. Plus, interestingly, it seems that the camouflage it has developed allows it to more easily approach domestic animals that might expect help from a human being upon falling into a trap. And, while many dangerous animals are shot on sight by farmers or reported to the authorities by other people, it seems the appearance of the slender-legged spider has caused many people to only realize they were in the presence of one after seeing it in the background of a picture or video, having previously confused it with a passerby. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Slenderman. This theme fellow was really interesting to take on, given it is one of the research subjects on our channel that is the least like a creature and the most like a supernatural boogeyman. And, while in appearance it is quite humanoid, the whole way it hunts and tracks people is so eerie that I knew making it an ape or another humanoid creature just wouldn't cut it. So I went down the track of what inhuman creature can I make look human? And, as with all great things in life, spiders were the answer. After all, the body of a hanging spider can easily accommodate itself in a humanoid-looking manner, and the fact that Slenderman is usually shown to have long, spindly limbs and even tentacles helped sell the impression of an inhuman entity passingly resembling a human being. Add to that the fact that Slenderman's influence often has a deteriorating effect on its victim's sanity as it hunts, which I decided to explain through the use of venom and theatrics meant to scare its prey, although making the period of the stalking much shorter in comparison to the stories made about it in the past. That said, I do think this is a valid compromise given that any creature spending so long hunting would risk losing its prey to another predator or having it run away, as can be the case with persistence hunters such as wolves. In the case of a heavy and, given the reduced exoskeleton, somewhat fragile spider, risking injury or losing prey would have to be minimized as much as possible, and reducing the time its hunts last accounts for both things. All in all, I'm happy with how this one turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.